Let's talk about Plock. If you're new here, I'm working on this project to try and get better as a developer, and it's not intended for public release anyway. It's been a good while since the last Plock devlog. Why has it been so long? Reasons. For this devlog, we're going to go from one and a half levels to five levels. Wow. It doesn't sound like a lot, and it's not necessarily a lot, but the rate at which new things are introduced per level is pretty high. Let's take a look back at level two, because it wasn't technically fully complete. We added this present, and the present didn't do anything. What's meant to be in the present is a boxing power-up. In order to have Plock change what he's capable of doing, we use commands, and we change the fire command based on whether you have a power-up or not. Normally this fires your limb out, but with the boxing glove, it fires a boxing glove projectile that doesn't come back. There is a delay on how often you can fire this, so you'll see Plock's glove reappear when you can fire it next. Now, why would you want this over the limb? The reason is you can destroy things that you couldn't destroy before. So the logs, for example, you can destroy those with the boxing glove, but you can't without it. For this design, I made Plock look a little beaten up, like he'd been in the ring for a while. And in order to change all animations for the current power-up, I use scriptable objects that contain an animator for each body part. I then swap them out when you get a power-up and return them to default after the power-up time is over. The good thing about this is that all the animators have the same animation names, so it just works when you change the animators. Let's move on to level three. Level three introduces Rocky Fella. This guy will disguise himself as a sign, only to suddenly spring up and start spitting rocks at you. They take three hits to destroy. The Rocky Fella has a detection radius around him to appear, and when the Rocky Fella goes off screen, they return to being hidden in the ground. The timing on these guys is pretty tough, like the original, so let me know if you think it needs adjusting. When they die, they fire out a bunch of particles and they drop a gem. Now this gem gives you invincibility for several seconds or until you get hit once and then you lose the stars. That's all the new mechanics for level three. On to level four. This level requires some new tile designs. So we need these different colored stripe slopes and we also need another power up, that being the squire. Really like how this design turned out. To be honest, I thought it was meant to be a fireman with a gun. I don't know why a fireman would have a gun, but I went with that kind of colour for the jacket. And the gun has a good range to it, and it's really fun to mess around with. I spent a long time tweaking level 4. Slopes are a pain in this game. There were times where you'd briefly get stuck on them, or you'd lose your momentum if you were jumping below them as you get caught on colliders. And that's a problem because most of the platforms in this game, you can jump from underneath and then land on top. I reworked the slope controls using useful video by Bardent and I improved the underslope collisions by separating my tire map layers for slopes so I could have my platform effectors be angled differently so you could jump through at an angle for a slope. I also reworked how walls work so you don't clip the colliders from below. As part of testing, I added controller support and this feels really good with the controller. I'm using Unity's new input system for the controls and I'm testing with the Switch Pro controller, the cool Smash Brothers version, I might add, onto level five, the final level for this devlog. For this level, we have to add some spikes, some angry flower boys, a new bridge color, and collapsible bridges. Started off with the bridges. In order to make the bridge collapsible, I do a little bit of jank. Essentially, I use animation states to store how destroyed each bridge tile is. If the player touches the bridge, the bridge increments the animation state of the tile after 0.1 seconds. When it reaches the end of the animation, the tile is deleted, and this allows me to make a tile for each point in the animation, and therefore, they have less health based on the number of frames left. Onto the spiky block thing. This fella is also on its own tile map layer and will damage the player if they make contact. I'm using the wall detection raycast on the player to decide whether you're too close. This is because the game prevents you from walking into a wall constantly. And finally, I made the flower enemy. I made a mistake drawing this. I drew it the wrong size. I really like the small version, but here's a large version that's the correct scale. Um, it looks a little bit cursed, which I like, but I definitely prefer the original. Thanks for watching, I've been making shorts on Plock to help me upload more regular on the channel. Let me know if you want a return to more technical devlogs. This one is more of an overview and gameplay video due to different amounts of footage. Uh, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.